Washington, this is VOA News. I'm Victor Beatty reporting at least five people dead, dozens injured Wednesday after a car plotted to pedestrians close to London's Parliament building. A policeman was stabbed to death before the assailant was shot and killed. Police describe it as a marauding terrorist attack. Mark Rowley, head of the counter-terrorism policing, said a massive investigation is underway. We have hundreds of officers on this investigation, and they're focusing on the suspect's motivation, preparation, and his associates. Rowley said as the vehicle was driven over Westminster Bridge, it struck pedestrians before crashing into railings outside Parliament. A knife-wielding man emerged, attempting to enter the Parliament building, who was confronted by police. Rowley said security in the area is increased. As a precautionary measure, over the next few days, we've increased the number of officers on duty, armed and unarmed, to provide a highly visible, reassuring presence. Prime Minister Theresa May condemned the attack as sick and depraved and raised the United Kingdom's threat level. The United Kingdom's threat level has been set at severe for some time. And this will not change. The attack coincided with the first anniversary of two suicide attacks in Brussels that killed more than 30, was claimed by Islamic State. The International Red Cross Red Crescent is appealing for hundreds of millions of dollars in aid for populations facing famine in four countries, Somalia, Yemen, South Sudan, Nigeria. Regional official Dominic Stillhart called for a massive scale-up in aid. 20 million people uh, facing starvation uh, is not something that we are dealing with uh, every day. Uh, and therefore, we really need to act uh, now. And if we act now, especially in Yemen and in Somalia, famine can be averted. Stillhart said there is a window of opportunity of some three months during which large amounts of aid must be distributed to counter the effects of drought and conflict. This is VOA News. As Syrian talks are set to resume Thursday in Geneva, the Pentagon said the U.S.-led coalition against Islamic State has expanded its support, airdropping local ground forces near the IS-held town of Tabqa in northern Syria. Stephen Zunas, University of San Francisco analyst, said this is a departure for the previous train and advise role. Now, not only do we have a combat ready forces that are much closer to the actual conflict, you're having just this kind of support of inserting troops in ISIS held territory and other actions which definitely uh, seem to indicate that the uh, United States is upping its direct participation in the conflict. Meanwhile, the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said coalition airstrikes killed and wounded dozens in recent days in the area. U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson hosting a gathering of members of the Global, uh, Co- Grant, uh, the Global Coalition on Defeating Islamic State Wednesday called for safe zones for refugees as the next phase in the fight against the insurgency. While a more defined course of action in Syria is still coming together, I can say the United States will increase our pressure on ISIS and al-Qaeda and will work to establish interim zones of stability through ceasefires to allow refugees to go home. He did not indicate where the zones would be located or how they would work. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte Thursday said he's been assured by China it is not building anything on the disputed Scarborough Shoal in the contested South China Sea. I was informed that they're not going to build anything in Panatag out of respect for our friendship. China's foreign ministry said reports it was building a monitoring station on the shoal are not true. Both countries claim the shoal. China's construction work in the vital waterway has caused alarm in Southeast Asia and in the U.S. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, exchanging verbal barbs with European officials for weeks now, warned Wednesday that the safety of Westerners could be in peril. He did not elaborate, but added that his country cannot be pushed or shoved, whose honor cannot be toyed with, whose ministers cannot be ousted. European officials have denied Turkish officials participation in rallies for a Turkish referendum, granting Mr. Erdogan sweeping new powers. South Korea raised the sunken ferry seawall from waters off the country's southwest coast Thursday, nearly three years after it capsized and sank, killing more than 300 people, mostly students. An investigation will seek answers to explain the cause of that sinking. Zimbabwe's opposition has demanded presidential elections uh, next month be conducted by an independent...